uh, kita langsung panggilkan saja itu ada dok ada Caroline Kumin ya sudah bergabung Hello Caroline Hello Hi Grace yes, yes, Grace Hi uh, How are you Alright I'm good Okay Thank you Caroline Halo so, teman-teman uh, uh, Miss Caroline Kumin ini adalah saya scientific claims and communication manager nutritional product uh, product wellness jadi teman-teman di sini uh, Uh, Miss Caroline ini akan menjelaskan atau akan menjelaskan akan meng, uh, apa explain tentang uh, gimana sih cara menjaga daya tahan ini Cuma di saat uh, Ramadan dan sekarang lagi juga apa namanya eranya juga agak-agak berubah karena kita sudah sudah ada pandemi gitu ya. gimana cara menjaga kesehatan kita nanti Miss Caroline akan uh, menjelaskan kepada kita gimana caranya dan apa aja sih yang harus diperhatikan untuk menjaga kesehatan atau imunitas di kita kita langsung panggilkan nanti uh, Miss Caroline akan berbahasa Inggris dan saya akan berangkat untuk teman-teman semua ya uh, Caroline uh, Oke, okay. hi everyone, um, my name is Caroline um, and um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the NutriShake and then also a hot topic which is immunity so yeah, you can go on to the next slide Okay, so um, my role, um, I'm Scientific Communications Manager and my background is that I'm a nutritionist Um, I have a master's in nutrition um, and an undergraduate degree in food science. Okay, so to talk a little bit about the NutriShake, um, the, the approved health claims for the NutriShake are high fiber and high in protein. And then uh, for protein, we can say that it, pro it contributes to the maintenance of muscle mass and contributes to the growth in muscle mass. Okay, so on to the next slide, please. Um, and we know that the NutriShake has three sources of protein and three sources of fiber. So this would be pea protein, um, whey protein, which is a milk protein, and soy protein. And the sources of fiber would include apple, um, rose hip, and sugar beet. So what are the benefits of protein and fiber? Okay, so just like there are good and bad fats, simple, complex carbohydrates. A protein is not just a protein, and not all sources are created equal. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and they can be classified as essential or non-essential. Uh, non-essential amino acids can be created by our bodies, but the essential amino acids, they need to be provided by our diets. Limiting amino acid here, and um, in the table, refers to the essential amino acid that is missing in the protein source. So as you can You can see here in this table, animal protein sources such as uh, whey, they are considered complete because they contain all of the essential amino acids in the right proportions to meet the body's needs. So whey protein is an excellent source of branch chain amino acids, BCAA also, which you may have heard of if you're interested in sports nutrition. And this is um, a key source of leucine, which is key to stimulating muscle protein synthesis. Um, unlike other plant-based proteins, we can see soy here. It does not have any um, limiting amino acids, so it is also a complete protein. So the PDCAS, which is the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score in the table in the right-hand column, is a method of evaluating protein quality. And this is based on our requirements for amino acids, but also our ability to digest protein. So the highest score is one. And as you can see here, whey has a score of one. Soy is also very high at 0.9. Jadi untuk protein whey dan protein susu itu uh, punya poin satu, di mana poin satu itu merupakan uh, golongan protein terbaik. Begitu juga pada uh, sari kacang kedelai. Tetapi kacang uh, pada kacang kedelai mempunyai poin 0.99. Jadi lebih baik uh, whey protein dan susu protein. In general, animal proteins are more easily digested and absorbed than plant-based proteins. However, pea protein is one of the more easily digested plant-based proteins compared to other many plant-based proteins. And um, as you can see here, it has um, 0.7 versus others. So the amount of protein a person needs to include in their diet, it depends on their age, their activity level, and also their general health. And as you can see in the table here, the recommended amount of protein is 0.8. 0.8 grams of protein for every one kilogram of body weight. However, more recent research shows that this level actually is quite minimal um, and that we should be having more protein in our diet for optimal health. Itu merupakan uh, minimum dari protein yang kita butuhkan. Jadi kita butuh lebih pro, lebih banyak protein dari uh, apa yang sudah dituliskan di sini. So according to this research, a more realistic protein recommendation is actually could be up to nearly 1.2 grams per kilogram body weight. 
and, and what that means for an average person weighing 60 kilograms, that they would need to consume between 56 and up to 72 grams of protein per day. So as you can see in the table, higher protein intake is required for highly people and also at certain life stages of the elderly or if you're trying to lose weight. Dietary patterns also show that protein intake is often skewed towards our evening meal, whereas breakfast is typically rich in carbohydrate and low in protein. Research shows that protein distribution is most effective to stimulate and maintain our muscles. This is where the total daily protein intake is spread evenly throughout the day. Um, a good rule of thumb here is to consume high quality protein, 20 to 30 grams at breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, depending on your goals and activities, protein rich snacks may be required in between meals. Um, and just the next slide please. So here is an example of what 20 to 30 grams of protein for every meal looks like throughout the day. So here we see for breakfast, the natural balance shake is added to, um, some yogurt, nuts and an egg to get up to that 30 grams of protein. So the MBS can be used, um, the Nutri Shake can be used um, as a nice addition for breakfast. And then at lunch we can see that um, by having a, a lean source of chicken with some salad and then I think couscous as well. Okay, just on the next slide, please. Dietary fibre has many health benefits. It adds bulk to the diet, so it aids digestion and prevents constipation. And evidence shows that high fibre diets are associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes and colon cancer. But globally, consumers are not eating enough fibre. They are falling short of the 25 to 35 grams per day, which is recommended. And Indonesia are only meeting one third of this recommendation with the intakes at 10.5 grams per day. The Nutri Shake can help you, um, help you get your protein and fiber recommendations. So here we are going to look at the ingredients that are within the Nutri Shake. And we see that it's got uh, protein from three different sources, which would be the pea protein, egg, and soy. Yes, there's a, sorry, there's a mistake on this slide. I see there's a picture of an egg, and that should be soy protein. The fibre sources would be apple, rosehip and sugar beet. Untuk uh, fibre yang di uh, dari nutrisiak yang kita sediakan adalah dari apple, dari uh, rosehip dan serat buah bit. And it also contains natural flavours and um, and it's uh, sweetened with sucralose which contains no calories. Okay, so if you go on to the next slide and now look at what now we can look at one of our key competitors. And this is the ingredient you'll find in this one. So we can have a quick look here. Jadi uh, ya seperti yang teman-teman tahu, ini merupakan salah satu kompetitor kita di mana uh, bahan-bahannya bisa teman-teman lihat semua secara garis besar. So first off is um, they have a uh, soy fructose which is a type of, of sugar, cellulose powder, um, rice fiber and canola oil. So far it looks okay, but then let's have a look at the other ingredients that are used in the product. Ya, jadi uh, itu bahan utamanya dan teman-teman bisa lihat bahan tambahan untuk uh, produk tersebut yang ada di uh, bawah slide ini. These ingredients would include polydextrose um, powder which is a bulking agent, dicalcium phosphate, lecithin which is an additive, and um, guar gum, potassium phosphate, uh, artificial flavors, pectin, and carrageenan. So in short, um, there are sugars in this product and there are a lot of different additives versus the much more, much shorter ingredient list which is in the Nutri Shake. Next slide please. So now ex let's explore a very hot topic at the moment which is immunity. Our immune system is our body's way of protecting itself from infection by foreign invaders like bacteria or viruses. The cells of the immune system are found in all tissues of the body and so it doesn't take long before a foreign organism meets the immune cells. Even though immune cells are found in all tissues of the body, 70% of your immune cells are found in the gut. So a healthy gut is really important as a first line of defense for the immune system. The strength of your immune system depends on a lot of factors since it is so complex. For instance, our immune system's capability reduces as we age. The idea of strengthening your immune system is intriguing, but exactly how it works, scientists are still struggling to determine. What we do know about the immune system to function well is that it requires balance and harmony. Therefore, general healthy living strategies are a good way to start giving your immune system the support it needs. And there are several things that you can do. 
So, eating a diet high in fruit and vegetables, ensuring a healthy gut microbiome, ensure adequate intake of the macronutrients, uh, maintain a healthy weight, exercise regularly, get adequate sleep, limit stress, and taking steps to avoid infection. So let's go deeper into each of them. You've probably heard that you need to eat at least five servings of fruit and vegetables every day. But do you know why? Fruit and vegetables contain high amounts of vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, and dietary fiber that have many beneficial effects on your health. When eating fruit and vegetables, try to choose a variety from all the colors of the rainbow, as each color actually reflects different kinds of phytonutrients that positively impact your health in many different ways. So next slide, please. Phytonutrients are plant-based compounds that provide antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits. As you can see, there are many different phytonutrients in different colored fruits and vegetables, highlighted here. Antioxidants protect against oxidative stress by keeping free radicals in check. Oxidative stress harms cells in your body and so it is a burden to your immune defense. Oxidative stress is caused by high levels of free radicals in the body. Free radicals are actually natural byproducts and they're also called waste products from various chemical reactions that occur in the cells of our body. However, unhealthy behavior can cause um, an excess of free radicals in your body and this can include excessive exposure to the sun, smoking, uh, drinking excessive alcohol and eating fried and burned foods. As you can imagine, it's vital to eat a diet high in fruits, berries and vegetables to ensure you get important phytonutrients that help to fight oxidative stress and strengthen the immune system. Okay, so next slide please. Specific vitamins and minerals that contribute uh, to the immune system are vitamin A, vitamin B6, folic acid, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin D, iron, zinc, copper and selenium. Vitamins and, and minerals that contribute uh, to reducing oxidative stress that function as antioxidants would be vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin B2, zinc, manganese and selenium. So where can you find these vitamins and minerals? Well, Beauty by Sweden is at our core and so we actually look to the Nordic diet for inspiration in all of our formulations. The Nordic diet is renowned for its health attributes and is a way of eating that focuses on locally sourced whole foods in the Nordic countries, including Sweden. Staple foods include berries and fruits, oily fish, legumes, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and herbs. The Nordic diet has been linked with many health benefits. Okay, and next slide please. As stated before, 70% of our immune cells are found within our gut. So a healthy gut is one of the first lines of defense for the immune system. The gut microbiome is a complex ecosystem of microbes, which include bacteria, viruses, and even fungi that are found within our gut. And what does this do? The gut microbiome helps to digest nutrients and bioactives. They make vitamins, amino acids, and even hormones. They train our immune system, and they further enhance our immune system by strengthening the gut lining. So how can we support the gut microbiome? Um, by feeding it uh, probiotics, which would be the good bacteria, fiber, and also prebiotics, which are found in foods like chicory root, artichoke, garlic leek, onion, banana. Not only do these improve your digestive health, but they can also have positive effects on your immune defense. Okay, next slide, please. Adequate intake of carbohydrate, protein, and fat are crucial to maintain immune function. So protein is required for the synthesis of immune cells and molecules which are critical to immune response. So remember to aim for at least 20 to 30 grams of protein at each meal throughout the day. Carbohydrates are the primary fuel for our body's immune cells. So remember to opt for whole grains, vegetables, fruits and pulses here as good carbohydrate sources. In relation to fat, choose omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids as these are anti-inflammatory and so are good for the immune system. Choose healthy fats from oily fish, olive oil, canola oil. No. There is strong evidence uh, that indicates being overweight or obese can negatively impact your immune function and defense. So maintaining a healthy weight is vital um, for immunity. One step towards a healthy weight could be to fill half your plate with nutritious fruits and vegetables before filling the plate with other foods. This will not only boost your antioxidant consumption, it will also result in eating less calories. Fruit and vegetables not only provide lots of nutrients with very few calories, they also require more chewing and this gives a lot more volume which also helps you to feel a little bit more satisfied. Research shows that being active is one of the most important things you can do for your health. 
So as well as helping to maintain a healthy weight, prevent disease, reduce stress and boost mood, regular exercise can support the immune system. According to research, regular exercise seems to reduce the oxidative stress levels. And this is because regular exercise enhances our antioxidant defense. And the key here in the research is that it's regular exercise. So ensure to work out on a regular basis to enhance your antioxidant defense. Next slide, please. Sleep is necessary for your immune system to run efficiently as possible. Making sure we consistently get a good night's sleep is one of the best ways we can improve our immunity and defend against viruses and disease. So be sure to get around seven to eight hours per day. Um, and of course, this is individual. Some people function very well on six hours sleep, but most other people might need eight hours. While stress is a normal part of life, too much stress during a longer period of time is clearly harmful for your physical and mental well-being. The stress response is known for suppressing the immune system as a result of an increase of the stress hormone cortisol. This leads to an increased risk of susceptibility to colds and other illnesses. Now we can't avoid all sources of stress in our lives, and nor would we want to, because in moderation it can be beneficial for us in terms of, an of our ability to focus, for example. But what we can do is develop healthier ways to respond to stressors. Deep breathing is one way of eliciting your relaxation response. So when you breathe deeply, the air coming in through your nose fully fills your lungs and the lower belly rises. Deep abdominal breathing encourages full oxygen exchange. And this is a beneficial trade-off of incoming oxygen for outgoing carbon dioxide. Not surprisingly, it can slow the heartbeat and, lo and lower or stabilize your blood pressure. Many infections are spread through hand contact to others and to yourself. So to avoid infection, you should wash your hands frequently with hot water and soap. So it's important to lather the soap properly, wash between fingers, on tops of hands and around thumb for at least 20 to 30 seconds. Rinse and dry, preferably easily with your own towels or disposable towels. And if soap and water are not available, hand disinfectant with at least 60% alcohol can be used instead. When you cough and sneeze, small droplets containing infectious agents are spread. So by coughing and sneezing into the crook of your elbow or your sleeve can prevent infection from spreading in the environment and from contaminating your hands. So just to summarize our strategies to strengthen your immune system, in relation to diet, it's important to eat a diet high in fruit and vegetables, ensure a healthy gut microbiome, ensure adequate intake of the macronutrients and maintain a healthy weight. In terms of lifestyle, it's important to exercise regularly, get adequate sleep, limit stress and take steps to avoid infection such as washing your hands and sneezing into the crook of your elbow. Okay thank you for your attention today and um, that is the end of my presentation and um, I hope you enjoyed it and if anyone has any questions. We have two questions actually in English. Okay. So first is what's the limit of protein intake per day that won't harm our body? Okay, well, in terms of protein, it really it depends on your activity levels um, and your stage of life, like the slide that I showed previously. But a good rule of thumb is to remember that to have 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. Um, and then if you're doing a lot of working out, you can have protein-rich snacks. But that's a good rule of thumb to remember. Hey, teman-teman, tadi ini pertanyaannya Serafika udah dijawab sama Caroline kalau 20. 20 meals per day, ya, yeah. Caroline. Sorry. 20 meals per day. No, so it's um, you would have a uh, 30, say 20 to 30 grams okay. of protein. Okay. 20 after, sampai 30. After three meals. 20 sampai 30, ya, teman-teman. How is the rules for consuming nutri shake for children in this case, four years old? So, nutri shake it was developed for adults. Um, so it's not a children's product um, safe for children to take, um, but um, it would be more for adults. Oke, okay, kalau uh, sarannya dari Caroline untuk pertanyaan uh, kakak Ida, sebenarnya nutrisek itu disarankan untuk anak, uh, tidak di bawah, tidak bukan untuk anak-anak gitu. Jadi untuk remaja sebenarnya. Uh, can you please to explain how old for the adults, like minimum age? Yes, hello. Um, so it was originally developed um, at Igalosa, and that would have been for adults over the age of 18. 
Um, but we've looked at it. I mean, it's safe for teenagers, um, of course. Uh, so I think from the age of 12, it's, it's fine. But it is more um, for... I, it's, it was developed for the needs of adults as a health, but for teenagers, it's fine as a healthy snack. Okay, so so which means it's not below twelve years old. Yes, it's safe for children. It is safe for for under twelve year olds to take, um, but it would be more recommended for the needs of adults as a healthy snack. But it's absolutely safe for children too. Okay, uh, teman-teman, uh, dikasih tahunya itu sebenarnya aman untuk anak-anak usia yang 12 tahun, tapi Memang yang paling baik untuk uh, konsumsi itu harusnya di usia yang adult. Tapi untuk teenagers atau untuk children pun juga bisa. Tapi oke. Okay. Um, yeah. So Novi, just to say, under four years of age, uh, it would not be recommended. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? To be clear, not yeah. recommended. So it would be for for toddlers and children. For toddlers and infants, it's not appropriate. But for children and teenagers, it's safe. Oke, okay, buat anak-anak itu adalah am- buat di bawah dari anak-anak, ya teman-teman mungkin untuk bayi atau usia yang ini masih 4 tahun, sebaiknya jangan dulu gitu. 